Go. Hi. Okay. Okay. How did we move it? Okay. Um, so today I want uh, I would like to to present a paper that is uh, discussing about increasing the action gap. So let's start with this motivation example. Uh, let's assume that we have uh, we have a simple mapper chain that consists of just two two states x one for which there are two uh, two actions uh, are possible one is uh, with pro one is action a one action is uh, action a two uh, according to which with probability one we uh, we stay in the in the state x one and another action a one uh, and with half probability, we move back to the x to the state x1, and with half probability, we move to the another state x2. In the x2, there are uh, there is just one action, uh, so x2 is just a perfect state. Uh, so let's consider. Uh, okay, just uh, yes. So in state two, what's the what's the cost of the work? So cost is. Uh, was chosen so that the value of function state x is equal to, 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 the, to this value that will be. Uh, That's the one step cost. Yeah, one step cost is the following one. It's an next, it's an, it's a, so is this a maximization or minimization? This, this is, in, in, in this problem, we are trying to solve maximization of total discount cost. Minimization. Maximization. We, we want to, to maximize. revenue. Yeah, total discount cost. You wouldn't say cost. Okay, you wouldn't so, want to maximize cost. Um, I'm sorry, uh, total discount reward. Total discount reward. Yes. So in state two, the reward is negative. Yes. So you do, you do not want to go to state two. Yes. State two because it means the cost is the uh, immediate reward is negative, right? Right. Okay, but if we were not trying the action A1. So in the action X1, if you if we choose. Um, Action A2, we don't get any reward. Mm -hmm. However, if we choose A1, we, we get immediate reward. One dollar. You immediately get one dollar. Yes, immediately. Yeah, immediate the there is a risk that we get to the to state X2, and then we will stuck there forever. You start paying off. Pay. Yeah, and each time we will pay this amount, and uh, in the in the limit we will get we will have this this amount. So that's a that's a very bad risk mitigation, right? You have a chance to collect one dollar. It's a uh, you have the risk of permanently paying every day. Yes. Right. Yes. But you also have some chance. You take some luck that at that time that you have paid pay one dollar, you do not stuck in that day. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. So. Uh, so from the theory, we know that uh, there should be a station that means the cost that will be optimal uh, for our MDP pro uh, uh, market decision problem. Uh, also, so let's calculate a few, few factors uh, for the first state. So 
So for the first state, if we choose uh, action one, then immediate reward is one, and then uh, with probability one half, we get to the, the same state x one, and probability one half, we get to the state x two. So, and we can write down some uh, well function. So then we can, uh, we know what is, uh, we, uh, while our function x2, it doesn't depend on any policy because there is no, no action to take. So we can write down explicit, uh, explicit formula for vx2 and calculate the uh, q function at, at state action pair x1a1 is equal to the own expression. In the same way, we can calculate uh, a q factor if we choose uh, action a2. So as we can see from from these two calculations, it doesn't matter what action, what uh, stationary deterministic policy we will, will choose. That um, a q a q q factor uh, with uh, a two is better than q factor with a a one. What you say doesn't matter what? So uh, generally, q factor depends on the on the policy pi. So here we have v pi x one and v pi. The pi is a uh, yeah some roll out some deterministic stationary policy I that we will have to, to to follow after after one one position set. Right. So I, if we if we look to the uh, definition of q factor, we'll see that here we should take an expectation of the value function according to some policy pi in the next uh, in the next step. Right, so we see that uh, we it's better to take action A2 uh, all the time at, uh, at state X1, so we can uh, easily uh, conclude that uh, actually the the best or oh, the best reward is, I'm sorry the best reward state x1 is equal to zero so it's better to to choose action a2 all the time um, so uh, in this way we can substitute instead of v5 we can substitute uh, v v star for for both uh, q factors and see that the uh, the difference between Optimal uh, Q factors is equal just F star. Uh, so the difference. So why is zero? Yeah, so V pi is zero because we want to substitute the optimal uh, value function. So this one, uh, Q pi x1 a2 is equal to zero. Uh, Q pi x1 a1 is equal to minus F star. So the difference is F star. Uh, so we will call the value between optimal and second best uh, action at state at any state as an uh, action gap. So the action gap for, for state x1 is, is equal to f according to for, for this specific problem. So uh, the action gap is the uh, optimal and, uh, minus, and second minus optimal. second optimal. Yeah. Um, so, so why? Oh, okay, so why uh, why is it a problem? So in, in basically in Q Q learning methods, uh, we usually use a greedy policy with respect to Q function. So either in the end of the algorithm or uh, during the algorithm, we always want to choose like arc max of uh, of Q function. Uh, when we can solve MDP exactly, there is no problem there that there is a small action gap. However, uh, usually we can't solve the MDP exactly, so we, we have to, to assume some approximation and use some approximation methods, for example, based approximation estimations, where we have to approximate the expectation in the in the Bellman equation or some low uh, dimensional representation where we also in some sense, approximate our Q, Q value. So in this in this case, so that's, that's uh, that's in the yeah, there is also, yeah, sorry, there's a 
that. Yes, there should be a maximum uh, So as a result, small perturbations in the estimation or in the estimation of the Q function during the argument or in the end of the argument may result in, in the, uh, identifying a wrong action to be uh, the plot, to be the optimal. So if we go back to the to, to our problem, that the, the difference between two two Q levels may result in the identifying action A A1 as an optimal. So uh, let's uh, let's look more closely to to this situation problem. Uh, so as as before, let's uh, find the set of all stations in the code. As we can see, actually there are only two stationary community policies. Uh, so one 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 policy is at state x one, which is action a a one, and at uh, state uh, x one, which is action a two. So just two two stations community policies. And from the theory, we know one of them should be optimal. So from the Bellman equation, we actually uh, can calculate the value of function of each of these uh, two policies at state x1. So at state, uh, so as we we already know, the optimal uh, the optimal value at state x1 should be equal to zero. So policy phi two is optimal. Maybe to let um, let your okay. Okay, well, yeah, that, I mean, that's a description of very good. Yes, uh, the, the four category at x1 you have to call either to a2 and a2 you can tell the one or you go red one take x a1 with numerical one dollar the word. So there's a 50 percent chance to be that after that you start coming to the state x2, there you say that you start in x2, you just you. So if we go back to the first uh, first slide, so uh, we conclude that the uh, so the the difference between uh, the optimal Q Q factor with uh, with a, uh, with action A two and uh, and Q optimal Q Q Q function with action A one is equal to action so action gap that is a very uh, a very different between optimal and second uh, best. Uh, optimal action. Q star means, you take Q, Q star means that we, in the first, uh, uh, like we would take action A, and then we will follow some policy So in this, in this, in this, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 yeah. So in this case, star means that here phi is an optimal yeah. policy. What, what, what is that? What What's pi star? Pi star is to choose the green, green. one. Yeah. yeah. So now we go back to, to the example. So uh, we can actually calculate the value functions of uh, of the first uh, station dismissive policy and the second dismissive policy. As we already know that pi pi two is an optimal optimal policy uh, that has value at zero. So phi one at state x one has the following has the following value. So we can calculate it from the Bellman equation. Uh, but already, but we have found that the action gap or the difference between two optimal few uh, few factors are equal to x one. So if we comp compare a few factors, it will be x one. If we compare value functions, it will be epsilon divided by one minus uh, discount factor over two. So if discount factor is close to, to let's say one, this should be almost minus two epsilon. So here we see the gap actually is almost twice uh, larger than the, the gap between few values. 
So, gap. Uh, I'm not so I'm I'm stating this. So basically uh, using like few functions, uh, the action gap is epsilon, but if we somehow but the what say the real gap maybe I'm not sure it's a good term to use. The real gap is bigger between one one policy and another policy. Right, because uh, right the the Gap there is just a, one, step, gap is a one step. One step different. Yeah. Now, B is a cumulative total, right? You can't ask Right. So, value function, value is if we, if we use I1 all the time. So, it's a fixed policy that we will use <coughs> starting from X1 or Phi2. But Q value measures something, something different. So, if we look at what, what is uh, Q. Q star x1 a1, uh, it means that first we use action a1, and then we will follow the optimal policy that is phi2. So Q, Q star, in this case, Q star x1 a1, doesn't uh, describe the value of any station at all. So in some sense, it's Q The difference of Q star and mean phi1 is the first step. That's true, yes. Probably. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so now, what we can can do with uh, it? So, in the standard approach, uh, let's say we have an algorithm based on the value iterations for the Q factor. So we have a Bellman equation for the Q for the Q function, and we basically want to iterate this Q Q value Q Q Q function. Uh, according to the theory, we know that Bellman operates. Um, is a, a constructive map, so the, uh, so these iterations will converge to some to to the optimal Q star variable, variable from which we can we can uh, take a greedy policy with respect to this Q star and obtain an optimal policy. So this is a basic, more simple approach where we know everything about our system, where we can calculate these iterations, uh, not uh, step action. As state action by state action, but as a like using vector vector representation basis. So we want to modify the algorithm so that its iteration will converge to some some other uh, tilde q star, such that taking a greedy policy with this q factor, we still will get an optimal policy. On the other hand, we want to increase an action gap. So Let's say uh, so. Here we want to have action gap between uh, optimal optimal uh, action and other actions greater than in the basic in the standard approach. So then, if we uh, when we when we uh, will find this modified uh, algorithm, it will be easier to work with. Uh, uh, sample based estimations or low dimensional representations because the action gap will be greater, then it will be easier to identify a uh, correct uh, pass action. Yeah, it's a very important. Then we have one more slide. Okay, so yeah. So, should I repeat? So, basically, here I'm describing a standard. Standard evaluation for Q. That's fine. That's fine. That's the last bullet. The last fine. bullet. So what, what our aim is for, for this talk and for the paper that I'm presenting. So the paper yeah, is willing to find uh, some modification of the, of the standard approach so that it will converge to, to some another to, to some uh, to another to the Q star such that if we take a greedy uh, policy with respect to, to this to the Q star, we still have we still will have an optimal uh, policy. However, we uh, we want to increase our, our action gap. Why? Why you want to do that? Because in the real world, so this is this is standard stand, uh, standard valuation like dynamic uh, 
generic programming approach where we know everything we can calculate this expectation exactly. There is no approximation of the uh, use, uh, Q value. However, you, uh, in usual, in the real world, we cannot solve the MDP exactly. So we use some approximation methods, like sample based estimations, low, low dimensional representation, and we want to, to have action gap, the action gap between uh, optimal and suboptimal or near optimal uh, actions as large as possible. I think that's very interesting. Yeah, it's not it actually makes the makes it important to widen the gap so that you have done you cannot sort of attack by the noise. So yeah, by the noise or by some approximation, yes. yeah. Yes. So there are several things here, right? It happens to so uh presumably QTR is gonna be right uh, we're gonna talk more about it. There's some of the other problems that are not QTR, right? But uh you know, um, so, uh, one approach, what, what, uh, what I thought about. This is very good. Okay, the talk has to be this, right? The question why are we doing this talk, right? So, is that clear here? The purpose is clear. Now that, you know, we think I don't know what the solution is, but we at least know the issue why it's not done. And um, so first idea when I uh, when I saw this problem and when I read the paper is what uh, let's uh, let's do not action let's do not uh, change the action if we return to the same state after one time step. So basically, let's uh, let's uh, uh, let's save or let's let's remember our action that we uh, that that we took in previous previous iteration and add. Uh, the state action pair to the state phase. So in this in this case, so if we go back to our problem, let's say if we choose action A2, that is, I remind you, it's just we go back to the same state. In this case, we'll move to the state uh, X1, A2, and this state will be absorbed. Uh, same, same, same thing we can do with, uh, with state X1. So if we if we move to X2, to, to, to another state, there is no problem. We uh, so the problem is uh, the the state state space and position are the same. But if we go back to the same state x one, uh, then we will move to state x one a a one, and in this state uh, we will have this uh, this loop and in addition to state x two. So in this case, you can see that uh, there is no problem that uh, Q function will uh, will measure some non-stationary policy. So we, we basically we have to follow either green green uh, green transitions or red. Uh, in this case, if we calculate the optimal Q Q values, our stationary our uh, action gap will be a, a correct value. So epsilon divided by one minus uh, 
but yes. after we stuck there, stuck there yes so basically uh, the state x1 a, a2 means that you basically have to choose action a2 in the original probe so if we right. take a2 then we basically always uh, go back to state x1 and should since, I, should I, should I go back to x1? no i mean you remember the the, the same the action that you uh, so it's there. yes so, so, yeah. Yeah. So you change the problem. So you change the problem. Something that is problem. So once you once you get X1, A2, they stuck there. There's no chance. Yes. Yeah, so we we yes. Yes, we change MDP problem, but the optimal station and the quality uh, will remain uh, an optimal. Uh, so. The statement is the optimal. So in, in this state, X1, A2, there is no action uh, to choose. So we all, always basically have to choose action A1 or A2. Action, uh, A1 or A2. Uh, X1, A2, meaning that uh, we have to basically choose action A1 in the original problem. Um, so, what's the problem? I just want to see So, uh, I mean, so this, this, uh, what's the new, new MD I mean, this, this is an, an, uh, an example. So, I, I didn't want to go in deep in this example. The, 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 the point was in this example that action gap can be. Uh, but, uh, can be correct, knowing, but without knowing the problem, it's difficult for me to think about the, the What's the what's the, the new problem? Uh, new, the new problem is uh, I guess to understand once you get x one a two, what happens? Nothing. You it's absorbing state. You always get a uh, rock. You continue zero. to play every day. Continue to play. Yes, continue to play, but the rock is zero. So basically, okay. if you once choose action a two, you move to this state and the top. Move to A2, and then continue to use A2. A2, continue A2, A2 basically, A2. yes. Yeah. And there is no other choice you can do in action in but this case. But in this case, it happens to be T for the flat. Choose A2, have T for the flat. Sometimes you choose A2, not equal to the flat. Then, right, there's something more dynamic going on. Uh, that's true. But in, in this case, we change the problem so that. Let's look at this one. One, A1, X1, A1, then you continue to play A1. Yes, uh, we continue to play A1. With, right, in the original problem, if we you, if you continue to play A1, there is a problem pro, with one half probability you move to state X2, with one half probability you move uh, back to state X1. So with probability A1, you stay in the same action, in the same state. If with probability A1, uh, 1 over 2, you move to state X2. That's true. So it's not however state. Yes, so we we get a basically correct, let's say correct uh, action gap, but the uh, but uh, the drawback of this approach will basically double the, the state rate. And of course, if you use some approximation methods, uh, it's not so very this good. Q star is uh, for this new problem. Yes, for the new problem. So if we if we take like action A two, we will say here, and if we take action A one, there is no. Uh, no possibility that we take action A2 in this part. So, so uh, be, be careful. The Q star X, X1, A2 meaning that state. Q star for that state, X1 state. X1? Not X1, A2 state. Right? No. So yes. It's, it's, it's 
not to start the other thing, right? Yeah. Okay, could be, could be yeah, yeah, okay. So, but here I mean x1. Maybe that one, the upper step, one, you I mean, the problem is, that, yes, yeah. yes, okay. Oh, uh, so, this is a, an example of one approach. Another approach that was uh, considered in the paper is let's do not change. Okay, that's part of the story, not yeah. With this new Q star, for this new problem, that's the star. Yeah. You can recover this optimal problem state from previous, uh, right? This would be Q theta, right? Yes, this it's, Q star it's, uh, would yeah. be Q theta for previous problem, right? Yes, it, it will be so, another. So, so this one will here. recover the high star for previous problem. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. And action and gap will be will increase. Right. Yes, but the the best thing is that we basically doubled the. Uh, I mean, we we just saw uh, we we. Can you intuitively explain? That's a good question, right? Do not just solve. Do not use complicated terms. Why? Which part of the gap is going to increase? Right. There's uh, same, yeah. Yes, in A two we have the same. Uh, it, it will be all, all to zero, but in A one, if we choose action A one, we have to move to this state or this state. And we have to call uh, basically uh, if phi, phi one policy because there is no. So here, what what was the problem here? So here was the problem that once we choose a one, then we we have we can we will follow basically policy phi two. So the green one. Here in the picture, if we choose action a one, we move either to x two or to x one a a one, and there is no. Uh, no possibility to choose uh, to, 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 uh, to to choose a uh, action according to policy by two according to the green green policy. So the negative side. Uh, maybe. Difference of Q in Q. Uh, this is a good no. This should be positive because a a green zero. Right? Zero. This one is negative, so this this q q star will be negative because we we go to x two and here we uh, we we take a negative right. reward. I I just didn't think that you could try very very good example. Why the you could take a one. So basically, take a one more negative. Uh. What I'm trying to so say that if, so here for this problem we have to follow uh, let's say red uh, red lights here here we can choose like one time we can uh, take red action let's say five, like five five one action and then if we go back to state x one we can take green action or a two here we cannot go back to state oh. x one and take yeah. like red so, red action so now, green action. Okay. This one here, we know A1 is good. In retro, in hindsight, we know A1 is bad, right? But A1 is bad, but in the future, you are not stuck there. You are right next time you come back to. Yes, so to here X1. we. The first of all, this one is optimal policy is phi 2. Phi 2 is, uh, is not just A1 anymore, right? Yes. So you avoid that cost thing, right? Not, uh, you do not want to gamble anymore. I don't want to choose that. <laughs> To the to the A1 anymore, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's the that's Q star. Okay. That's Q star. Yeah. Uh, for the original part. The original part, I take A1 as a bad policy. I take the one bad bad policy. Oh, I'm fortunate. I didn't step into the to the jail. Yeah. So I give I have chance to to try one more time. Yeah. And now I don't want to try that. I want to follow the optimal, right? Yes. Optimal one would then play to high Okay. Like that. Whereas uh, the new problem is something if your x one try a one right try a one yeah. get you that that state. So once you yeah. get a state according to the new definition, you're forced to continue to play that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And which is worse thing. <coughs> you yeah. know the a one is bad, you're forced to play more time a one. Yeah. That's bad. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so uh 
So this is one approach. Another approach that was uh, a set center approach in the paper is do not change but the. I don't see that. I know you can talk about it, but you can talk about it. But it's the yeah, so basically the idea is to, to use an action if we, okay. the same action if we go back. Okay. What's the general construction? Uh, I mean, I, 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 I wrote down this general construction and but I intuitively basically want to... Is it, are you going to come back to this? No, thing? no. That's the only slide. No, that, that's the only slide and this is just so uh, an example of that bad, bad idea. That's not. Uh, so, so that's uh, not that I used to think that the doing is always can increase the action. Yes, it is. Always, but the all, all, always, but the drawback is uh, a larger. Thing. I understand. I understand. But the theory, there is a theory saying that uh, doing this is uh, can increase action gap is yes. still recovered in the capital. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Still recovered optimal part. Yes. Um, so the paper proposed uh, a different approach. Mm -hmm. Instead of changing the, the problem or the state space, we will change the operator or Bellman operator, modify a, the Bellman operator so that uh, you will have the, uh, these two, uh, two uh, properties. Mm -hmm. So but uh, idea, idea of taking the same action if we go back to the same state is uh, basically here um, we also use this idea. So here, um, this so this is consistent Bellman operator. So the consistent Bellman operator, instead of always maximizing Q value, we don't mark, we we take the uh, Q value of x uh, x a if we go back to the same state. If we don't go back to the same state, then we we use uh, the same approach, the the same the, uh, the same term as we would use for Bellman operator. So uh, let me explain one thing. So uh, we, we, we want to apply Bellman op, uh, consistent Bellman operator to the Q of XA. So if according to this, um, to this state action, uh, so from this state action, so if we, from, from this state, if we apply action A and we get to the same state, so X prime is equal to X, uh, we don't maximize a Q value as we would do for Bellman operator, but we will, we will take the same Q factor. If we don't go back to the same state, then we uh, we use a standard approach in the Bellman operator and we maximize uh, here uh, Q factor. I see. So, so I see. It doesn't use the Assuming that nothing, has, basically nothing has changed, and we keep the same Q Q value. So don't take any other action before the our next state R. Don't put any other policy. Still stuck with. Yeah. Ba basically, this is this is estimation of the of the following uh, of the let's say raw part of the of the, of the simulation estimation of the of the rest uh, subject. So we assume that if we get to the same state, basically we cho we choose the same action. Right. So I'm trying to listen to what you said. Okay, so I did nothing wrong with what you said. Yeah. Okay. So it's the same what you said. So if I if state action state uh, action A gives me next state same state, then I do not uh, you follow the like, prediction uh, the online equation but you you believe it by the by the best action. Okay. Uh, so now, uh, so we we can state that the consistent Bellman operator is optimality preserving and gap increase. And now I will I will explain what uh, those terms mean. Uh, so optimality preserving operator is operated such that uh, for iterations. Uh, for, 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 the iter for the standard iterations, the limit, so, and so these iterations will converge to some, uh, let's say, Q, Q, uh, in the limit, Q, K, X, uh, X, A. So we can uh, calculate a value function for the limit 
and in the limit, if it, uh, this zero function will be optimal. So if we apply an operator Q star that is uh, optimality free zone, then this operator will converge to the optimal force. This is one thing. Another thing, uh, if we have suboptimal action, it will stay suboptimal for the uh, uh, if we use iterations with this operator. So one thing, uh, at least one optimal action remains optimal. So basically, uh, if we take a greedy policy with respect to, let's say, in the limit, we will get Q. Uh, I had to write it down. So um, in the limit, if we take a greedy policy with respect to Q, K, X, A, we will still, uh, still be able to recover the optimal policy. On the other hand, uh, the suboptimal actions may will remain suboptimal. So uh, it's it's okay to take us a uh, greedy policy with respect to, to this limit uh, because we will always uh, will be able to recover an optimal. Uh, okay, so many things, very uh, very Okay. First of all, the QKXA, does that have limit or not? QKXA. So here we, we take our limit. So there's no limit. We will prove that. Uh, so we have some other limit. Hmm? So there's no limit. Yes, okay, I'm right? yes, yes. So did you, so, what is that? But after the take the maximum, um, let's say we we will be able. Uh, uh, so you you uh, so here yes, max. Uh, so we take maximum and take the limit. So, so that one has a limit. That one that one has a limit. Yes, and we will we will prove it. yes that here we can we can take the limit and that's fine. But uh, for Q for for all Q so for the optimal one. For the op uh, optimal value, we can take the limit, but we can take the limit for Q Q function. Q Yes, and we know it. Yes. But not here. Not here. No. This average doesn't convert. Yes, in uh, general, no. But, uh, but uh, it does convert this value function. Well, thank you, that's okay, so of course, if you recover value function Q star, then you can find Q star value, right? Yes. That's, 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 and so, okay, so that's first thing. Now then, what's the state of the So, so optimal preserving is basically, uh, <laughs> this basically is the first bullet for, uh, we, won't, we basically satisfy the first bullet for. First, what is that part? We recover the best value. Yeah, we can recover an optimal. Value yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Gap increase. Optimal. Optimal action. So in each state, we can recover optimal, optimal action. action. That means that we can recover optimal. So why you can recover optimal? <clears throat> uh, so basically, you, we can take. Uh, uh, greedy, greedy policy with respect to uh, we start. So we we uh, we will re we will recover an optimal value function. So we can take greedy policy with respect to this value function. On the other hand, uh, there's uh, we will not mix uh, with suboptimal action. So, so let's see if that's going to get covered. Okay, uh, let's see that. Uh, which way, which line says that we can recover by star? Uh, Uh, I mean, we win. We, 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 uh, Actually, I don't know uh, why is that case. Why is it become a five star? Uh, okay. So, okay, so let's say we here we know optimal 
So uh, then we can uh, basically populate, let's say, Q, Q values with respect to this V star and no, find that's that. not the way. Not the way. I think that, go back to the, the average. I think we cover pi star. Oh, another. So maybe maybe this problem is not the well state. We have a five star here and need a few here. Right. right. And um, you don't uh, have to do here because the few here doesn't exist. Right. Okay. Yeah. No few here. Yeah. Because of the, oh no, I mean, it's not mean, uh, let me see. Yes. We find that let me see the few here. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. This Let's one option. Here. This one option. And we know that from this Q, Q tilde. Uh, uh, yeah, don't move away here. So, uh, one one one. so uh, yeah. And we know that Q, this Q tilde, uh, if action A is uh, oh. suboptimal, yeah, it, it will be less than uh, optimal. optimal uh, uh, so what? Um, it's optimal then because of this stuff. Are you suggesting that if A is a, if A is op optimal, optimal yet, it, it should be equal. Optimal. Yeah, at least at least uh, one optimal action will be equal to this stuff. Yeah, well, A is optimal at X. That's We can go back to, to the proof then in the, in the, 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 the proof. Uh, yeah. Uh, right? Yes. So I guess it just follows from the first statement. If you see the star, and if you think you then suit uh in the lin max. So that lin lin max uh -huh. is a limit that changes the star uh -huh. for one. Yeah. That's definition. <laughs> so this this, this is definition, that's and uh, we 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 can prove that we is equal to this star. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Y
this doesn't say strictly, right? Um, okay, we can we can say Principally, that they can all be equal. That's true, but uh, okay, let's say uh, the operator t prime is strictly gap increasing if there is at least uh, for one let's say for one action there is a, a strict in the fault. But we will see that uh, let's say for yeah, some examples. Yeah, some examples that uh, there there is a really a strict in the fault, but definition is the fault. Uh, so now uh, I will say the main result. So this is the theorem. So let C be uh, the standard Bellman operator, and we have a T prime, the operator that has the following two pro uh, two two properties. One, uh, for any iteration, uh, the Bellman operator will be uh, applied to the any Q Q factor will be greater than T prime Q. On the other hand, we can subtract. Uh, uh, some amount, let's say alpha vx minus qx a, where it's alpha between zero and one. And in this case, uh, t prime q will be greater than than this difference. Then uh, the statement of uh, theorem is the point. Then t t prime is both optimality preserving and gap increasing. What's v? V is a uh, so let's say maximum of q, maximum uh, with exception of uh, q x a. No, v is not valid. V is generic. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, generic function. yeah, let's say, yeah, some general function that okay. is equal to maximum, maximum of so, q so, x a. Yeah. So, you said, yeah, I would get rid of that and get the maximum. Uh, maximum. Yeah, maximum. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So, v is generic error. Yes. Yes. So let's say if we choose action A to be really optimal with respect to this pure function, then this term will be zero. And then uh, T prime should be equal to T Q. So basically here we we are subtra subtracting this amount from uh, if action A is not is suboptimal from the from something that we will get uh, with the standard Q, uh, with the standard of the operator. And so this one. So if it is optimal, it should be zero. Yeah. 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 So we don't devo uh, so we don't devoid uh, optimal actions, uh, but we <coughs> increase uh, a estimation of the Q for suboptimal. Yes. For all, all yeah. This is a huge a deep deep prime operator operator applied to the final final effect. The huge element in the final effect. Yeah, so this is this is some some kind of uh some uh problem. So upper bound and lower bound Uh, right. So uh, one more time. So if action A is optimal, this 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 term is is zero. Uh -huh. That's optimality. Yes. Uh, in some sense. But if action A is not optimal, then th this is some positive term. So we will subtract uh, 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 this amount from the from the Q Q factor for suboptimal uh, action. So T is uh, the original operator, right? T is the original so, one. Uh, so, so if we, we yeah, so if we apply uh, original operator to Q, this is what we would get. Um, this is what we would get in the standard standard approach. But here we also subtract uh, this amount from sub of if A is sub. But this is greater than yeah. Yeah. Right, so I think that this 
the maybe uh, maybe correct one. So okay, so right, so we want something to find perturbation, right? That's the that's the thing. That's you want to perturbate, you don't want to be too the original problem, that's the final thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you want to deviate a bit. And the question here is that you don't want to deviate. Now stuff up you don't want to deviate too much, but in fact uh, your idea is that you want to deviate. Uh, yeah, we want to deviate. Yeah, that's the that's yeah. the you know, you know, beginning and uh, your motivation. I want yes. to give it, but uh, there's only two certain amount. Yes. So you don't have a strict gap in case. So you're subtracting this. I mean, we, 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 we yeah, because yeah. Uh, if action is optimal, we want to have equality between T right. T prime and T. That's, that's but the other one he says is you're subtracting something by where the ego do is saying this is the second inequality where the ego do it's not saying you are you're obliged to subtract something. Yes. Right? Yeah. So that actually is related to the previous case. Uh, yeah, yes, I mean if are, if you're all actions strictly, strictly improving the gap, right? Yes. I mean, it will, we will improve it if, let's say, apps, uh, alpha is, let's say, one half. Then, if action A is suboptimal, then th this will be strictly positive. And we yeah. like, subtract so it. Where the ego is that? Because the actor can't do, and the end state can still be uh, Okay, yeah. So, in this, in this, so that's, that's let's say, actually uh, related to the yes, previous yes. Uh, definition, yes. right? So yeah. plane. Uh, yeah, so is, yeah. He, here there is yeah, that's right. This is equality yeah. related to that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the second bullet here, uh, what Mark is saying is, oh, you're subtracting something from Q, therefore you're reducing the gap. But this inequality, if you actually want to, Subtract something, then you should be less than equal. You at least need to subtract this much. Yeah, yeah. You at least need to subtract this much. But this is a greater than equal. So, therefore, you are, you may be subtracting something. But you may be subtracting, but you may be not, right? You may be not, you should be less. That's right. Everything's more equality. It's just that much. So, now equality is something may be greater than equal. So, PQ, P1Q from this definition can be exactly identical to PQ. Exactly. So, you're still okay. Yes. Don't increase the gap at all. So, so yes. therefore, this thing is related to the previous comment, the previous statement, that this can be equal. Yeah, can be equal. Now you don't yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's no improvement. Uh, that's, so that's why I said this approach can maybe it's advantage illustrated by those examples. There exists an uh -huh. example for which this is actually strict. The PQ uh -huh. strictly better than when Q, when B is not equal, uh, when A is not equal to optimal action. So there's a string yeah. improvement. This is not the number. But you illustrated the advantage using example. There exists that you actually. But in order, to, in order to prove something, I mean, this object, uh, of course, is a very classic country, right? And I'm talking to us, yeah. You are right. Uh. So let's go back to the consistent uh, Bellman operator. Okay. So the consistent Bellman operator can be uh, written the following way. So where's at e x, uh, x uh, So this is a probability of returning to the same state uh, if we choose action A. So uh, first step, uh, so first, of all, first property is obvious because here we don't ma maximize. Yeah, we don't take an optimal, so obviously Bellman operator will be great. Uh, the second bullet forward, we can take uh, any alpha between one and maximum <coughs> gamma dx x a. So, for example, if we take alpha is equal to gamma, then the second uh, will be also true. So, we basically can prove that the consistent Bellman operator is optimally conserving uh, gap, gap and use this here. Do we still have V, yeah, V is. Yes, it's right. Next time, I mean, next version, I think it's 
So this is how we can apply the theorem. Uh, so this we consider we considered only one example uh, of multi zone gap decreasing operator. So we can come up with uh, other examples. For example, the advantage zone operator, where instead of taking uh, some state action dependent uh, uh, term here alpha, we we basically want we can take a fixed alpha. Uh, uh, also, we can, that yeah. So that's the example. It is slide step by example, right? Yeah. Fine. That's yeah. Now you said alternatively, you can fix alpha. We can fix alpha here. Yeah. 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 You can actually use kind of state, right? Yeah. And um, just put alpha there, right? Yeah. And of course, that's that works. Yes. Still, we can apply the theorem and prove that this operator is. Uh, do you need a? Do you need a something construction something the whatever new operator? Uh, I will talk about this later. Uh, okay, is there any assumption so far that? Uh, no, that no. Comes? Moreover, this operator is not constructed. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, so let's so let's so let's wait so like a few slides. Yes, so when basically, this is the first. Uh, uh, the, the authors claim that this is the first time in the literature when we they, they use some operator that without a contraction or non extension property. Uh, and still, we were, we were able to uh, prove that they, they, they will uh, reverse to something meaningful and with good properties. Um, so yeah, so the intuition behind this, uh, as I mentioned, so we will uh, we will subtract uh, this uh, action gap from suboptimal. Uh, uh, another one, another example is persistent advantage learning operator, where we take a maximum between our advantage learning operator and this term, so that uh, in the next, so we where we assume that. In the next state, we also use action gap. So, and we take the maximum between. Well, the, or the maximum. And we take maximum the this advantage learn operator and this operator that will preserve action A for the even for the next state. So basically, we we encourage to not switch both actions uh, too much in this operator. Uh, so this is. Uh, this seems to make sense. I, I don't know. I don't see something. So you see, you can take it from the A. You take action A and get your lead to do any state of A. And, yeah, and, and you, you take. You, a. you still take action A. A. But you take maximization term here. So basically, uh, you choose a be better, let's say, better, better yeah. estimation between. Yeah. Disadvantage learning and I, I think they are okay. better version of this. I think that the first term is that the end learning that is not on some things, but some things are all right. Uh, okay, so this uh, and let's go to, to your comment. To, to your comment. So, we uh, actually uh, one can prove that these two operators advantage learning uh, persistent advantage learning operators are not contraction. Uh, but one, I mean, uh, we can also prove that they can have more than one fixed point. Uh, the consistent Bellman operator has a construction map, a con construction property, so uh, uh, it has better converging uh, properties. But these two operators are not construction. Moreover, we can, uh, in the paper, they, they were able to construct, uh, uh, they called it uh, alpha lazy operator that have multiple fixed points. But still, uh, this operator will be uh, optimality preserving and gap increase. Although it, it has, uh, may, may have uh, multiple fixed points. But this slide has three masks. Yes. Right? First thing is the CP operator. Yes. Is it 
uh, yeah because on that yeah if i have emphasized there's no there's no need for optimal storage but uh No, yes. Yeah, we can. Yes. This is only really convert. For sure, yes. Q yeah. uh, star may be different rather than with a standard development operation. Oh, well, Q star unique for T for Officer T. Right? Yeah. But this is now this. So this one converts to something. Q tier. Yes. Okay, yeah. Q tier. Of what? Yes. So. Yes, but it, it satisfies the uh, oh, oh, yeah, equation if there is okay. So, so this is a Q thing that converges. So basically, yeah, yeah. In this case, we do, we don't need to take a uh, limit. Supreme, we can so take just limit. For CPE, you don't need to take limit. Yeah. But for the, for the, for the upper version. Yeah, we, we for upper version, you have to take the limit. Right? Yeah. And for the yes here, you have to take something called a unique fixed point, at most fixed point. Yeah, at most. So this is for CPE equation, you have unique fixed point. Yes. And we also have Yes. And for alpha version, you don't have a contraction. Contraction. Yep. You don't have contraction, but it cannot have one fixed point. Cannot one, 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 yeah, one can. Uh, just no, there is one, but uh, not. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the 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 paper doesn't say it, and I, I can I, I just check it. If there are two two for, fixed points, that for advantage learning, I think you have. Maybe yeah. it, it's it's uh, uh, the the, the paper doesn't say anything about the existence of no, the no, fixed no. point. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So okay. it's uh, unclear. But the only point is that it has at most, uh, most no, uh, cannot have more than one fixed point. Yeah. So if there exists two fixed points, then the, they should be equal. So one can prove the, the, something like that. Uh, uh, so this yes. is two boards, two, two results. But the third result uh, in the in the paper they uh, they propose uh, alpha lazy operator they have that may have multiple fixed points. Uh, but the this operator is still for multiple serving and scaling. What the previous slide? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Persist, persistent, persistent. Yeah. Persistent. I mean, here, uh, so we, we take uh, action A. In, in the next option to stay in the action. Yeah, even for the next, uh, for the next state, we still take. Let's let's say we we assume that it's allowed. Actually, actually, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so in the paper, uh, they they tried these two operators, uh, advantage learn and persistent advantage learning, for deep Q learning. So they modified a standard deep Q learning algorithm. 
what may okay, so yes what, what may remind you uh, what is a uh, standard deep q learning algorithm so we initial uh, we initialize some q function that is approximated by some, uh, some neural network uh, so with random weights and in in the in in this paper we have to we, wait, we use a paid buffer uh, with capacity n so then we run episode from one to n. So for, for each episode, we choose action AT according to epsilon greedy policy uh, with respect to current estimation of the Q value. So epsilon greedy policy means that this probability epsilon, uh, we choose a random action with probability one minus epsilon is uh, arc max of Q, current Q, Q value. So this is uh, the epsilon greedy Yes. Um, in the theory, I mean, we cannot. Um, Without an epsilon exploration, yeah, we we take. Work, right? I, yeah, I think even it's, this doesn't work. Okay, this is nothing. This is what this is the average. Yeah. Okay. This is this is nothing. This is what. Yeah, there is no strict theory that it will yeah. converge to something. But in fact, it is. So we, uh, right, uh, if we choose this action, we observe the next action and the rock, and uh, and so this uh, uh, this phone numbers in the in the okay buffer. Then we sample a mini batch uh, of size. Okay, uh, I should write down a different question, but let's say some some mini batch. From our play buffer, uh, for each uh, for each sample from the from this mini batch, we uh, calculate the target, uh, and then we want to minimize uh, uh, the the difference between the target and the current, I would say, and the Q value. So basically, we find uh, a new way to, uh, for our uh, approximation of the Q functions minimizing. Uh, this difference. This M is, 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 is a mistake. Yeah, it's a mistake. It's I a haven't noticed. Have yeah, it's, it should be different. I haven't noticed. So this is a uh, uh, the a stretch of, of the of the deep Q. Yeah, but they fix the Yeah, yeah. The, there are two. The, the, there are two two networks. One is target network, another one is changes slowly, another one is more faster, but uh, I'm just, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a scratch. Or, um, uh, so, so basically, when they calculate Y, the T might not be on the process. So let's say they, they do several uh, several updates of the uh, Q of theta first, like several updates, right? several these steps. And then they only update what uh, they call the target Q function. So I mean, this uh, theta, Q theta there could be. I mean, they, they change right? this uh, this Q theta several times, and uh, before they change the let's say target Q Q function uh, that is used for so generating samples. So basically, the batch they not respond to the same problem. Um, yes, in the original algorithm, yes. But let, let's uh, yes. But this is just a stretch because I, I didn't want to, to to go like go into like each detail of the algorithm. But I think that uh, the the here is uh, like data and quality. So the uh, what you talk about the version is that very common thing. Yeah, it's changing more slowly than this.
Right. For each minute that batch, you can get a new data. Right. But that one is very annoying. Right. You want to do a little bit, right? Let's uh, take multiple minutes that you can exhaust and have the problem. Okay? So, so something, then gradually change data to that one. Uh, well, this basic stochastic gradient. I mean, in this is it, allowed to take noise in the gradient. But in this case, like if we strictly for what I what I wrote, so here we 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 do like only one step and then we we change our policy. So it's right. it's too noisy. But it's, that the stochastic approximation happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We change a new. That's right. New experiment. Yeah. Okay. One sample, a new experiment. This is a lab. This is a new experiment. Right. Okay. The stochastic reason you say just take the noise and yeah, you can yeah. Right. You don't wait. But in practice, in practice, the noise is very bad. It can be very bad. Yeah, too noisy. Because uh, uh, it's not really so bad. It's not policy. Uh, That's the stochastic reason. It's information. Right. But uh, I think there are many smart variables that they just, many things. My intuition says that part is not good. And uh, and many people, uh, many apps show a different version of that the data set. So, what they say is the data slow down the target, even target for not changing too much, too frequently. Okay, that's what they say. They say on the phone, they say that the data set is the largest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's yeah, I, I, I was talking about this. So, so this is the linear least square on No, it's, it's, it's a, the theory is a narrow network approximation. So, we so cannot... this looks like solving <coughs> element equation. Uh, yes. Yes. Find a sample of the interaction of the element. Right. Yeah. Right. So so using <laughs> using one step, so one step is probably very much very dangerous. That's one. And then these two are Um. So yeah. So this is not yeah. policy value. This is actually policy improvement. Here, right. yeah. Right. It's all so now in the next line is to the, the next three point point part essentially to solve that uh, the the the, 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 the Right. No, uh, in the three bullet points we change this this uh, this one. So here, as, as you as you mentioned, this this is basically a Bellman operator uh, let's say, uh, uh, estimation. So this in the standard uh, Bellman operator, we this blue uh, blue line is the phone one. Uh, we we change this uh, blue line on two uh, using two different operators. Advantage learning operator, so we change so this one and persistent advantage learning operator. So we, we change this blue line uh, in the following two ways. So basically, we change standard Bellman operator on advantage learning operator and persistent advantage learning operator. So, yeah. Uh, any questions? Yes, I love that. Okay. Always uh, one sentence of one concept at a time. You know that you can do okay. one. Okay. The standard one is here. Okay. Yes. So second uh, second one we change this uh, blue blue one. So this is basically uh, advantage uh, learning operator. So this is Bellman operator, and this is uh, minus alpha that we fix. And this is well, uh, I mean, so this is what I called uh, uh, well functions. I mean, that is not a well, function. and this is the so yeah, yeah,
uh, what here? Ah, in the, it's just we we just uh, I we wrote in different way persistent dump. So if you go back to the persistent question, so here, uh, yeah, okay. So uh, I hope you believe that this is basically we wrote persistent dump uh, operation. Should be done now. Um, I, 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 yeah, yes, there should be. I just wrote the uh, persistent uh, batch turn operator. This is the same thing. Oh, I see. So, so I just wanted to to take out this uh, Bearman operator. Uh, but this is basically a batch turn uh, this is an advantage operator. I mean, is this the AL advantage operator? Advantage, yes. This is the uh, uh, traditional advantage operator with this definition. I, I mean, I use the definition that uh, the authors used in that. Right. So, in the standard literature, this is a uh, advantage function. Advantage function. Yeah. Or advantage, yeah, advantage function. Because we basically calculate the q minus v. There is no operator. So. Okay. Uh, so um, okay. So uh, they uh, they applied this this uh, deep learning method for they started from five games four games where they tried different uh, alpha parameters uh, from zero to one with step zero point one and they uh, obtained the phone curve so the black curve is a standard uh, deep uh, deep learning so this is uh, when uh, alpha is equal to zero. So this is the level, the black curve is the level of the standard map. Uh, so everything that we have above is the improving uh, with persistent learning operator is the blue curve and advantage learning operator is the red curve. So as we can see for, let's say for four games, uh, uh, our results have been improved, but for a home game, uh, using advantage learn or system advantage learn operator is a bad idea. So the higher is better? Higher is better, yes. Why? What's the, what's the measure of something? So one, so one is the reward uh, of standard deep learning. If we have higher, so we get higher lots. Let's say in asteroid game, uh, we can get 3.5 uh, larger in average. Rock uh, using a uh, persistent advantage learning operator. And, uh, so, uh, average. Is so they, they yes they 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 did this experiment for me. So they uh, so they fixed an operator alpha uh, and run uh, run simulation ten times. Uh, then they took uh, average between these 10 times, and this is the highest score for the highest average. Score. Highest score for the, for the average. Uh, maybe I should draw it. So let's say we have three curves. For the, for the same operator and for the same alpha, we get like the three curves. Uh, and Okay. So this is reward. This is uh, iteration. Iteration of them, yes. Uh, then we then they calculated average uh, of this curve. Okay, this is the average curve. Uh, and so, so for, so for for this, okay, one one curve. We have iterations and uh, of the of the policy, and 
implementations to the deep neural network. Yes, updates. Update. Of the yes. Uh, update, update, uh, update the flow data. Yes, yeah, the, yes, one uh, for the state. The so T is like for each episode we, we run a T time step. For each episode T time. So this is breaking meaning what? Meaning uh, updates of the of the target to 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 Which is not a deep that, that is not yeah. Not on yeah. any yeah. Uh, yeah, not on this right. slide. Right, this is related to this uh, question. Yeah, then yes. You can hit any speed of the, the yes. notation. Yes. So the update, the duration of the update the part, how many yeah. update the part. Yeah. Each change the target, you have marked for episode the chart, right? Yes. Yeah. So, okay, so one curve, uh, they, they run 10, 10 curves as far uh, 10, 10, uh, 10 times uh, the output. So they go, uh, and then they average among this 10 times and took the, the maximum for the average. Uh, so, um, so the average curve of the average the same time, uh, but they are noise. So you take time. Sometimes you need to have high score, sometimes low score. Yeah. The average. Yes. And uh, then the duration also may be non minus one. Yeah. It may not be improving. As yeah. you play more, you may not have any improvement. Right. Yes. Okay. And then you put the highest one. Among yes. Average. Yes. Uh, that's a bit disturbing because you are not putting the quality in the average score. That average score, which maybe the no quality, nobody can play the game to reach that number. Uh, the quality is possible, right? I mean, average. this is iterations of the target Q, Q value. So each 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 robot is corresponding to some uh, weights of the of the Q Q Q function. Right. So we can recover all the same. the red one, the average. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, yes. Because You're right. You're right. Average, You're right. No part, sorry. no yeah. state can uh, that, right? Yeah, no, yes. no human being can get that score. I mean, on the other hand, the, 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 if, if this is the average, there exists some, some curve where you, you get even can get even better than this. So it's, uh, I mean, this is what, what, they, what, oh, they, what did. they did. Yeah. Okay. I, okay. I so that's for, for one average. Uh, one, one operator, one fixed uh, yeah. output. Uh, so then they fixed, uh, so this is this five curve. Then they fix uh, alpha, uh, as I understood, to 0 0.9 and compare uh, these three operators for 60 games. So for uh, among these 60 games, uh, for 12 of them, a standard deep Q learning operator was uh, better for 21. And the advantage learning operator uh, gave the best result. And for 31, uh, persistent advantage learning operator gave the best result. Of course, they uh, were just to mention that it doesn't sum up to 60 because for two games, uh, they return the, the same score. So that's why it doesn't sum up to 60. Uh, so the, the uh, median score improvement, uh, if, we uh, if we compare to standard deep Q learning algorithm, for advantage learning was 8.4% and for persistent advantage learning was uh, 9.1%. Average score improvement is 27% uh, for advantage learning and 32.5% for persistent advantage learning operator. Uh, uh, any questions? Okay, so for Thank you.
in the axis, this is alpha alpha prime. So they they wanted to to see how uh, alpha yeah uh, what alpha is the best. One. So this uh, on the figure, if you get pi alpha equal 0.9, right? Yeah. And this was again, but first to uh, the fifth one, and for the for this one, they they said that uh, uh, we attribute the auto performance of the sequence agents using the system that um, this alpha is equal to 0 0.9 to a statistical issue. So not sure what happened, but this is what they how they explain this this situation. Uh, red one is advantage learning, uh, blue one is persistent uh, system advantage learning. Uh, so let's uh, see more closely to the to the two games. So here they uh, they show how that's which game? That's a game. This one for six over sixty games. So for for three operators uh, and we six game like mixed system. So this is just five games, and they where they uh, tried all out. But uh, like to try all alpha okay, for fix one game, it's always uh, like uh, one is dominated the other. Or no, 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 no. Uh, so here they showed that let's see, so for twelve, uh, um, uh, for twelve games from the sixty games, as the standard approach uh, returns better results. Right, but uh, with the better game, maybe this sixty game is maybe uh, one game as good. Yes. Can I have five beamer game rider? No, no, no. Well, well, one asterisk game, one beam rider, one home. Why not magical beamer rider? If a, sounds like if I play beamer rider, I always use one. Uh, right? So I, maybe. I, I didn't get your point. So there are like 60 different games. Mm -hmm. uh, for each game, we tried standard approach. We tried our uh, advantage learning operator with for example, this. If alpha. I were to combine the WhatsApp, I would have to sign up with that. For, for beamers, I probably want to use the AAR, right? Because yes. And, but if for uh, other things, I probably would like to use other, other apps. Yes. So there is no consistent improvement or uh, amount all the games. Right. So, I don't know about the game. So that's why this is, I mean, this comparison makes sense. I mean, something like that. We play one, just play one game for, I mean, I just don't have that much knowledge. But we play one beamer, one palm, one something. Because, right? I think if you probably want to. I want to use base average for farm. I want to base average for beamer. Yes. I want something better than this, right? Maybe that's not attractive, but too much diverse. I want my average. I want to use that more, right? So. Yep. And, and I agree that there is no consistent improvement, but in average, if we can compare like average medieval score or average uh, like medieval score improvement or average improvement, then median score. Uh, so median score improvement. Uh, um, so from so from reference point is a DQ. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yes. So the improvement over DQ. Yes. So and. Um, here, was algorithm for, the, for this big alpha, so the improvement. Uh, so they also sh uh, showed how, like for two games, how 
uh, the uh, uh, learning course evolved uh, via uh, training frames. Um, so for these two games, we see that difficulty learning can, can go down, or for example, after some learning that persistent adaptation and adventure keep, keep, uh, keep increasing. Uh, so this is one thing. Another thing, uh, they showed action gap uh, for, for one game. Uh, this, this, uh, these two plus are for one specific game. So they showed uh, average action gap uh, over episode steps. So the, the persistent adventure and advantage uh, operators uh, return, uh, have great uh, average gap in average. Uh, another thing that is uh, more important is estimated stage travel. Uh, as uh, Inro mentioned uh, earlier, so the problem for Q, Q learning is basic, is always that uh, Q learning algorithm uh, usually overestimate uh, variable function. So in this case, we see that uh, estimated uh, variable function usually less for advantage learning and persistent advantage learning uh, modification of the algorithm. Uh, in some sense, this is indication that uh, the, our, the new estimations are better than uh, for the standard algorithm. So, yeah, uh, question. This is now the like a particular one game or something? Yeah, this is a particular one game. So this is that particular one, one, one game? One game, this one is the game. Uh, so let me state a conclusion and open question. So in the, in the results of the article, they, uh, they found many practical of multi-preserved operators uh, they, that do not preserve suboptimal Q values, but are optimal uh, preserving and gap increasing. Uh, however, the open question is, is there, uh, can we find a more stronger theorem uh, than, uh, than this one? So this is just, uh, sufficient uh, properties of the histra or what are necessary for uh, can we find something uh, like weaker condition on the operators to be optimal to preserve uh, we also propose uh, so in the in the article author also proposed an consistent Bellman operator where they can and for consistent Bellman operator we can interpret alpha term here as uh, um, multiplication of uh, discount factor and uh, probability to stay in the same action. However, there is a uh, lack of uh, probability, probabilistic interpretation of alpha term and more general how, how one uh, should choose this alpha term uh, for, for a specific problem. Uh, and the last open question is uh, in the article, so uh, the conclusion is in that for the the multiple uh, broad family of, of multi preserving and gap increasing operator, operators uh, were proposed. Uh, persistent Bellman, advantage learn, persistent advantage learn, alpha lazy operators. Uh, so the general question is uh, which of these operators, if any, should be referred uh, to the Bellman operator? So this raises uh, the question why we should choose. Uh, like advantage to an operator, I'm uh, not a uh, operator for a specific problem. Uh, and more general question is, uh, is it possible to find a maximum efficient? So what, what is the best uh, in some sense and to find the same uh, optimality preserving operator for a specific problem? Uh, so this are uh, conclusion and open question. I guess we don't have time to, to go through proof, but Okay. Uh, the, the map no, uh, there is a slight modification for consistent Bellman operator uh, in the paper that I haven't shown in the presentation. Okay, well, that's
Yes, there is uh, computation for a different problem that will take time to explain. So I, I haven't included the problem, uh, these computations in the presentation, but there is there is. Uh, do you think also the neural network keeps you? Keeps you? Yeah. I don't remember. I, I, I remember I, I the last. Why? Yeah. I mean that immediately first thing I want is why that one, right? Yeah. So in that school they they they, they tried but for a different problem. I don't know. You don't remember why it's not effective. Uh, I don't remember why they haven't tried this. Uh, so they they but don't. What's the limiting? Right? Is it limiting? Yeah. Right. That's, and they that's, they, that's, they, they they don't try this consistent common operator for Atari game because in the Atari game uh, we have a uh, continuous state space. Here there is some assumption that we go back to the same state. The continuous uh, state space. It's, uh, there is a zero probability that we will go back to the same oh, state. Yeah. So that's why they haven't tried this operator. But they tried uh, for, for a different problem. Uh, any questions? So, yeah, so if someone is interested, uh, like here are proofs that are. Uh, more compact, you know, they, that I wrote in more compact way than in the article. And uh, so references, so first references to the, to the paper that I presented, these two uh, papers, just uh, papers that I mentioned in the presentation. And these two papers are four works that one can also see if he's interested in this. Uh, Okay, thank you.